Good morning. The last few days I was thinking about facing a big crowd and I was praying, Lord, I can't face this uh, a big crowd, but Lord answered my prayer. <laughs> and now it's only half of the people. I, I don't need to face so many people here. So I'm so happy this morning. Um, and also, I think it's God's will. As I'm talking about God's will, it may be God's will that I have to, you know, talk to a few people. Anyway, um, and also, uh, all, thank you for all the encouragement and um, support and the prayer that uh, many <coughs> dear brother um, came to me and told me that uh, you're praying for me. And I wanted to say thank you for praying for me and it's a great thing. And also I want to extend uh, uh, my sincere uh, thanks to Brother Joe Smurta, uh who has graciously accepted the request last week and spoke on uh, short notice. Um, as mentioned before, my uh, the theme of today's message is knowing God's will. This subject has been in my mind for a few months. Uh, and when the discussion about the, the Hilltop Chapel came up, I thought this may be the right subject to speak on. So I hope and pray that the, the Holy Spirit will speak through me so that the hearts may be open to hear what God wanted to us to say. To, to hear. Um, <clears throat> knowing God's will, the question, how to know God's will? Um, this is one of my questions in my mind, how to know God's will. Perhaps uh, you, all, you have the same question in your mind this morning. How do I know God's will? Uh, in situations like buying a house, finding a new job, finding a life partner, uh, and so on. So, how is God going to speak to me? How is He going to show me what I have to choose? And <clears throat> before, uh, before I move on, I want to um, see, uh, show you what is the meaning of the word will. And our life is full of choices, big choices small choices, right from uh, we are small, we have choices, different choices in our life. Even if you, um, in a morning, everybody have coffee in Tim Hortons. You know, when you go to Tim Hortons, the, she, the, the Tim Hortons lady will give you a long list of choices. Just all I want is a coffee, but you get a big list of choices that uh, half of things uh, are confused and I don't understand what are those choices. And it is okay to make mistakes when it comes to order a coffee. It, it doesn't hurt too much. Uh, maybe all you need to, if you don't like it, just throw it or something like that. But bigger choices like that affect your life, you know, we have to be careful. Uh, we want to seek God's will in that. Um, probably uh, we are so worried about the future. Uh, we want to make uh, very you know, the plans that are very um, uh, comfortable or safe plans in our life. So, uh, in that respect, probably we pray and seek God's will because we are so worried about the future. Isn't it? So, we are all concerned about the future. So, we, are, we seek God's will. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, when we as we talked about the meaning of the word, the will, meaning of the word will is uh, ability, uh, uh, desire, determination, purpose, and plan, and so on. So in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, we read like this. Uh, you don't have to take it, maybe uh, come up on the screen. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, in this particular passage, God is talking to the exiles of Israel through prophet Jeremiah, saying, I have a plan for you. What about today? Is God speaking to us? Of course, God is speaking to us. How? Through His Word. 
And, and the same God who spoke to the Israel through his prophet, he's saying, I have a plan for you. <clears throat> and now the problem is, how do we know that plan, perfect plan of God? He, God is saying, the, the, the God of the universe, the creator of the universe is saying, I have a plan for you. But our problem is, how do we know that plan of God? Now to understand that great plan of God, uh, we have to go back to the Garden of Eden and see what happened there. Garden of Eden, God created uh, Adam and Eve and He made the perfect plan for them. And He put them in the perfect place. When Eve followed by <clears throat> Adam disobeyed God and that perfect plan has changed. <clears throat> but still, God could have put them, uh, you know, uh, get out of them right away or put an end to them right away, but he did not do that. He, in his mercy, he made a little perfect plan for mankind. What was that plan? The redemption plan. You and I fall in that perfect plan of God, that is the redemption of God. And <clears throat> now, to understand that, we have to go step by step, what is the plan for God? For each one of us or for the whole mankind. Let's turn to our Bible to 2 Peter <coughs> chapter 3 verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. I just read it. The Lord, <coughs> the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. But everyone to come to repentance. This is God's plan for the mankind. He um, does not want anyone to perish. See here? He is waiting, patiently waiting for everyone to come to repentance. And when we look at this, this is the first and basic will of God about mankind. Knowing God, the Creator. And God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the, 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 of the God, of God, and by, them, uh, by that, know His will. And First Timothy chapter two, verse three and four, it says, "This is good and pleases our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth." See God's perfect plan here. For the first plan for the mankind, God created or God gave the salvation. That's the perfect plan, the redemption, work of redemption. <clears throat> this morning, some of you are not saved sitting here. As you listen to this message, I want to, you to understand that the perfect plan of God in your life for the whole mankind, first and foremost, is you have to accept His Son, Lord Jesus Christ, as you say. He cares more about this than any other earthly choices that you may make. Let's go to the next one. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter three was uh, chapter four was um, verses three to eight. I don't want to read the whole uh, passage. Just what you say. Um, there it, we read like this. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. So first one, for the whole mankind, God's will is you have to be saved. Accept Him as your Savior. Second plan for God, for the mankind, or a person who is saved, you have to be sanctified. What is the meaning of sanctification? <clears throat> you know, it means set apart, to be set apart. Sanctification means to be set apart. It's, it's interesting that um, we had the opportunity to hear the same message from Brother George Matthew during the retreat. He spoke about the same subject. And I was thinking about the sanctification. It came to my mind that he made, gave, you an ex gave you an example saying that the vessels in the temple are consecrated and set apart for his service. And that is just for his service. If the great God cares about those vessels, even those metal vessels, 
how much more he does care about each one of us, how we live. <clears throat> and um, it says you have to set ourselves apart. Means you have to live like a person who is totally different from others. You have to know that. In Psalm, uh, chapter, uh, Psalm 4 verse 3 says that, Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call him. I was meditating on this, uh, this particular verse. It says, the Lord has set apart, know that the Lord has set apart, set apart his faithful servant for himself. We should have that knowledge about that God set apart ourselves for him. You know, I was thinking about the whole thing of the knowledge that we are strongly different. You know, if you know that uh, that we are set apart, if you know that something special, our way of thinking, our talking, it's all will be different. I was thinking we will be a little more careful what we talk, a little more careful what we do. We'll be, we'll be a little more careful when we, uh, you know, interact with other people. Then it will be a little more careful in every aspect of our life. I was thinking about just one incident when Sally was expecting Lee and, you know, all of a sudden she uh, falls sick. And uh, it was so, she was so sick that we went into a, a shop post to, to buy uh, some medicine. You know, <clears throat> we got into the, uh, the store and we came out with the medicine and she was sitting in the car. I still remember that. She was sitting in the car and she pulled out the paper from the, the medicine box, the tablet box, and she was reading from, from the beginning to the end. Even the small fine print she was reading. Is it safe to take this medicine? Because if I take this medicine, it will affect my baby. It will affect her. So I have to be careful if I take this medicine. Then she started calling the, the, the people, the, the, um, uh, the shoppers, drug mart people. Is, is it okay to take this medicine? Because she is so worried that if I take this, it may affect my baby. This is the exact thing what God is talking to us. You know, we have to be careful. If we know that we are something different, if we have that knowledge, will make our perspective different. Isn't it? So we will be careful the way that we do things. It will be different. And I'm just moving on. Next one is um, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. Ephesians chapter 5, 17 to 18. There we read like this. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, uh, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs of Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Here, the Holy Spirit is telling us, do not be foolish. He wants us to be wise. How do we get wise? How do we get wise? How do we get the wisdom? Where do we get the wisdom? We know we get wisdom if you read so many books. Uh, as a worldly point of view, you read so many books, you will be wise. You know, you be something else. You know, you have so many knowledge. But how do we get spiritual wisdom? Here it says, you have to fill with the Holy Spirit. How do the Holy Spirit fill us with the wisdom? In Corinthians it says that the Holy Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. When Paul is writing the, 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 the word, the Bible, he's saying it is revealed. It's not my wisdom. I, I do not have that kind of wisdom. But the Holy Spirit reveals the wisdom of God uh, to me. And I'm writing this to you. So the, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we are wise. So we have to fill with the Holy Spirit. To be wise, we have to fill with the Holy Spirit. That's what uh, it, it's, uh, Paul is writing here. So then we will know what in God's mind. So because of that, we have the filling of the Holy Spirit. We will know what is in God's mind. Um, and then we have to 
that means we, have, we are giving full control to the Holy Spirit. So what happens when people feel with uh, anger? You know, I am a, a short-tempered person. I, I get angry very fast. And probably you think I am not, but <laughs> I am just opposite. I get angry very fast and frustrated very fast. But most of you are like that. You know, what, what happens if you feel with anger? You know, you'll hit somebody. You know, you'll break something, you know, uh, you'll, you'll yell at somebody. What happens if you feel with uh, happiness or joy? Your face will be bright and you'll laugh and you talk too much and, you know. Those are the, the things that come out when you feel with something. What happens when you feel with Holy Spirit? Read uh, uh, Galatians 5, chapter 5. Uh, there is this, you can see that what happens when you feel with Holy Spirit. You will be, um, you will love people. You will be joyful, you will keep peace with every, everyone, you will show kindness to everyone, you will be good to everyone, you will be faithful. Those are the things that if you fill with Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, just uh, let's move on. Uh, Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, uh, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. When I read this verse, it looks like what I understood is, as an example, I can see something clear. Now, if you do this, I can see God's will some, something clearly. I mean, somebody is taking off my blindfold and I can see things. What does it say? You know, this particular verse, many of us struggle with. This verse we read so many times. Uh, many times we read it in the church, in our personal uh, reading and everything we read. But it's, it's hard to apply those words practically, isn't it? Do not conform to the world. Transform, renew your mind. What does it mean? <clears throat> that means it is okay for us to be a little different from the world. You don't have to be, you know, using their language. You don't have to listen what they listen. You don't have to talk like one of them. So it's okay to be something different from them. You, you can make that difference in the community, saying that I am a little different. You know, that's our problem. We don't want to be different. We want, you know, we want ourselves to be one of them. You know, people don't want, if in school, you know, you know, when I, during our family prayer, I always ask this, uh, to my girls, hey, I question them, what are you doing? What is this? Say, Dad, you know, you don't understand it. Everybody does this. You probably you will hear the same answer at your home. Dad, everybody does this. You know, all my friends ask it. You know, all my, you know, uh, colleagues do the same thing. So, that means there, there is nothing. It, it, it sounds like the rest of the world is doing this. It's okay. Don't worry about this, you know. Uh, that's a normal thing. If you, any high school uh, in the students in your home, you, you probably hear the same and say, I, I don't think it's just me, hear the same, same thing. This is the normal conversation at any, you know, uh, home that, who has uh, high school children, or a little older. They think it's okay, you know, dad, you don't understand this. Everybody in my school, uh, you know, all of them does the same thing. It doesn't matter, you know, the rest of them are doing, but maybe okay, it doesn't matter. But, <coughs> see, there is another problem. Just, I don't know whether you all have the same problem. You know, when we go to bed, how many of you take your your gadgets? I mean, iPhone, iPod, and you listen to the music and uh, you know, I, iTube and YouTube and so many things in bed. You know, so many tubes here. So read Psalm 63 verse 6. You know. Main, one of the main reasons that we are not able to hear God's voice is this. You know why? Read Psalms 63 verse 6. On my bed, I remember you, I think of you through the watches of the night. 
is it applicable in our life? Is it applicable in our life? What is in our ears there? On our bed, are we doing this? I am thinking, I am meditating on the greatness of God. And now, we have all these things, you know, distracting us. And we don't have time to listen. We don't have, you know, time to understand anything. Now we are complaining. I can't hear God's voice. He's still speaking. God is still speaking, but it's hard for us to understand because we have distracted with all this in our, in our life. <clears throat> now, all this, now we started with salvation. The first and basic will of God. To know that He is our Savior. Accept Him as our Savior. That is where the, the basic will of God starts in our life. Begins there in our life. That's the will of God in the whole mankind. To, to come to the knowledge of the truth. And to accept Him as Savior. Those who are saved, it doesn't end there. That we are not comfortable with that. We have to be sanctified. We have to set apart for Him. We have to know that, that we are set apart. And that knowledge will make uh, our life a little different. Not only that, so we are saved, we are sanctified. Now what? We are filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, what we need to do is we have to transform and by renewing our mind. To change our attitude, change our way of thinking. And then, if we are in right relationship with God and we have all these basic things uh, uh, in position, then let's see how God talked to us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says that, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? What a profound statement. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in you? The Holy Spirit who is inside our heart will speak to us. Some people say the Holy Spirit was first in our ear. But how the Holy Spirit communicate to us? Do we know that, know that we have two spirits? We have our own spirit. And we have the Holy Spirit. How do they communicate? How the Holy Spirit communicate to us? I'll give you an example. In, probably you won't know. Uh, back in I, I grew up in a village back in Kerala. Uh, those days, when I was small, you know, there was no PA system. Now we have loud, you know, loud speakers all around, and we can hear everything loud and clear and everything. Those days, though, there is no PA system. There's no mic, mic all came, even I remember the, the street light came in our village and we were so happy, you know, we were dancing in the night at 10 o'clock because there was street light. So those are the days I'm talking about. So those days what the evangelists and preachers do, they go into the street and take another person with them. What is his job? The preacher will, you know, speak and the person beside him is speaking loudly like a loud voice so that people can hear. That was the system. So the, the person who is you know, speaking loud has no new message. He is just repeating the message a little louder than the preacher. This is exactly what the Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. And our spirit reveals us through our conscience. And we will be able to take the right direction, right um, decision. <clears throat> and now, another way we know God's will is God, the Spirit of God will move somebody's heart and we will be able to hear the message that we want from others. This has happened in our life. Somebody is coming to speak to us. That means the godly counseling. Other people are speaking to us. We can go to somebody else for guidance. <laughs> but in this situation, we have to be very careful. You know, um, uh, there is a, uh, in the, if you go to um, first King chapter 12, there is, you, you see a king um, called Rehoboam. He's the son of Solomon. 
you know what happened? It's an interesting story. He wanted, when he became the king, he, I, I'm not going to explain the whole story because it's time is short. Uh, what happened is, we may know the story. Uh, what happened is he wanted to know something and he wanted to call, he first went and asked his father's counselors. Solomon's counselors, he, he went and uh, asked them. He, they said, okay, so you, your father did this, your father gave them a big load of work and what you need to do is, you have to increase that. No, sorry, uh, you have to uh, put that down and you have to be nice to people. And he didn't like that way of his father's counselors. He said, oh, those are old people, you know, probably they cannot relate to this time. Uh, it doesn't make sense because I don't know whether these old people can make a uh, decision at this time. This is time is different. He went to his own age and it, it, it reads like this. He went to his own uh, age group and then asked, him, asked them, hey, what should I do in this situation? Wonderful idea. It's, it's okay, you know, they are scientifically, you know, learned people maybe. Uh, they said, your father did this, you have to increase the double. You know, the workload, these people are going through, the, 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 you have to increase it. He thought, okay, so this is a good idea. So they may be okay, they may be right, because they think differently than my father's people. You know, they are old and they don't think that way. This time is different. This is 20th century. We can, you know, ask a 18th century person. So this is fine. What happened? This is one of the reasons that the kingdom was divided into two, Israel and Judah. See, the wrong, wrong counseling. You have to go to the right person. God will speak to other people, through other people, but make sure that you're going through, going to the right person. Godly counseling. Now, God will speak to us through circumstances. Maybe we felt that many times in our life. There may be no other choice in our life. We may be struggling, okay, oh Lord, show me your will in this particular situation. Maybe God will not talk to you personally, but God will make the circumstances work behind you that you have to do this. You will do this. And then when you safely pass through that situation, you will look back and see, this is really God's plan. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes we think, why can't I not understand God's will? Why can't I not understand God's will? Now one of the reasons we don't understand God's will is that we are so worried about the future. You know, we should not seek God's will in the sense that we want to know the future. If I take this decision today, what will be the future? In that sense, if you go and see God's will in that sense, probably you won't get an answer. And, you know, I have to be thinking about God, what is your plan for me? I am, in the, am I in the right direction in your plan? Am I doing the right thing that, that you meant for me? Not that go to, you know, go and pray, Lord, show me this. I want to know what happened tomorrow. That's not the right way. If most of us see God's will in the sense that I want to know what is the future tomorrow because I am unable to see what is happening tomorrow. So I want to know God's will, a professional advice, what is happening tomorrow. That's not the seeking God's will. You won't get an answer there. You know, and some of us think, you know, searching or seeking God's will is so difficult. We can't attain that. It's like, uh, you know, there was a plane lost uh, a year ago, a Malaysian flight, 370s. Yesterday, day before yesterday, um, there was a news, they found something, we don't know what it is. But still, you know, searching, searching, searching for more, more than a year now. We're all, initially they thought it's uh, near Australia, then some people said near Antwerp and uh, Nicobar Islands. Some people still searching, some people gave up. We think searching God's will is something like, you know, this. It is too hard. It's, it cannot understand what is so mysterious. Does God do this thing to us? Is it so mysterious that we are not able to see God's will? It's not. You know, there are times if we are on the right track in the will of God, 
we will, we will be able to listen to his voice. But there are thin, things in our life that, that will affect or prevent us from knowing God's will or unfold God's in our life. What is self-will? This is what, when we are saved and being taught and we have a conscious understanding about loving God and obeying Him. But sometimes, you know, our self will take over the situation. Um, <clears throat> we think, God, I know a Lord, I, I love Him, I pray and everything, but uh, we wanted to do something different, you know. I, you know, that's our nature, our self will, that, that in me, that think, I can do this, right? Think about uh, 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 um, David. David was a man after God's own heart. You read that, and he passionately loved the God, loved the Lord, and he seek God's wisdom and guidance in everything. But when it came to Bathsheba, he willfully did the wrong choice. See the consequences he suffered, consequences he had after that. So this is what happened in our life too. Many times this happened in our life. We seek God, we pray and uh, you know, we spend time in prayer and everything. But at times, we overtake, we take over, you know, things of God in our hand. This is okay, you know, for our own will and our own desire. So that's one thing that prevents us from knowing or hearing God's voice. Second is straying away from His path after knowing Him. So when we are saved, the first few weeks or months or year, we are so happy. We wanted to do this, we wanted to do that, and gradually we are straying away from the presence of God. Do you think God will speak to us? And I'll give you an example from First uh, Samuel chapter 28, verse 3. This is an interesting sub uh, subject that Saul, you know, he, Saul was anointed as king of Israel. God anointed him. When you read this portion, he came to uh, Samuel, he came to the medium, and he, he was called, he wanted to see uh, Samuel, the spirit of Samuel. So she brought the medium, brought the spirit of Samuel. Samuel asked, why did you, you know, call me? Why did you disturb my, uh, my rest? Why did you call me? See what, it's interesting thing what Samuel has, uh, what Saul is telling there. He's saying, I am in great distress. The Philistines are fighting against me and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me either by prophets or by dreams. So, I called him. See, what is happening here? Saul is saying, God had departed from me. God anointed Saul as king. But now, he is in great distress. He's saying, he is not talking to me, either directly or indirectly. He's not talking to me at all. He departed from me. This is what happened in sometimes in our life too. You know, God is not talking. We won't hear his voice. Why? Because, we strayed away from his path. Once we were so enlightened and we were energetic for the, for the Lord and now we are away and we still wanted to listen to God's voice. He won't talk to us. Another thing, distractions. The distractions that this is when we want to know God's will really but we wanted to, um, we are distracted and make wrong choices by listening to wrong counsel. I already mentioned that. I just want to emphasize this special situation to the younger generation here. <coughs> you know, it is okay to go and ask older people for godly counsel. Don't think that they cannot guide you. You know what, when you go and ask advice, situation like uh, that impact your life, if you go and ask your peers, your 
uh, your friends about your uh, advices. If they are not walking in the will of the Lord, you will be diverted from God's plan. His, His perfect plan in your life. They can distract you away from God's plan. Make sure when you, you know, uh, you know, seeking uh, advices about that impact your life, make sure you seek godly counseling. I'll, I explain to you about um, uh, Rehoboam in uh, Saul's son. In contrast with that, there is another king in, in, in 2 King chapter 18 and 19. His name was Hezekiah. He was the king of Judah. What happened to Hezekiah? He, there you can see a crowd of people coming from Assyrians coming to attack. And he was telling all the, the commanders of, uh, king, of uh, king Hezekiah and saying, see, don't listen to King of Hezekiah. He's talking to his commanders, his uh, military and his uh, administrators saying that I am, I, we are the powerful you know, king, Assyrian king. And do not listen. He's talking to Hezekiah's people, king of Ju uh, the, the, the Israel, saying that don't, do not listen to your king. Why? Because he will advise you certain things which is not make sense. He is saying your God is able to do this, but no, don't listen to him. You know, Hezekiah was broken. <coughs> Hearing this message, he was broken. You know what he did? He did not go to anybody else. He did not consult with people in, in this group or his military or his advisors. You know what he did? He tore his clothes, went into the presence of God. He asked, Lord, what should I do with this situation? What can these people are saying about, against you and they are threatening me? He was in great fear and in, in danger. Still, he went to the presence of God and he said this to the Lord. Lord, give me the guidance. Because of that, he was victorious. He doesn't need to fear anything. So that's godly counsel. You have to go to the right people, right direction. You know, instead of going to uh, going around and asking people about uh, your life thing, your that impact, big choices about your life, you better go to God personally and ask, seek His guidance. Another thing that distracts us is we are impatient to wait for God's will. This is when we are walking in God's will and according to His guidance and God reveals His will in our heart. But we are very impatient. And we do not want to wait for, wait for His perfect timing in our life. We are impatient. If you look at the life of Abraham, this is what we can see there. Abraham, God, Abraham's request was, I need a child. So I do not have a son. So I need a son. God agreed. Okay, I will give you a son. And through you, the whole universe, the whole world is going to be blessed. He knows that promise. He agreed. He understood what happened. He couldn't wait. He said, uh, I need to help God. You know, to fulfill this promise. And in our life, this happened. See the consequences. Still people are suffering because of that bad choice. Because he was impatient. In our life, we also, we know God is, He's going to, He promised this, 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 but He needs a little help from my side. I need to do certain things to help God. We're impatient. That's one of the reasons. <clears throat> Another thing is lack of, let me, let me go quickly, lack of trust. You know, sometimes we think, you know, I hear this many times from children. I know everything that God can do so many things but this one thing you know I have to do he doesn't know my taste you know I have to pick myself God doesn't know that extent of my taste we are not you know trusting in the Lord in, in that deep the Proverbs 3 verse 5 says trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. What does it say here? You have to trust in him. And he knows everything. You don't need to worry about anything else. He will give you whatever. You have to trust him. There's a story about um, Charles Blondin. Probably you have heard the story of Charles Blondin. He was the first one who crossed Niagara Falls on a tightrope. He was a tightrope walker in 1859. <coughs> you will see this story around so many uh, messages uh, you know, about trusting God. What happened is he was so, uh, his well-known person, he was the first one who crossed Niagara Falls and one time he crossed Niagara Falls on the road um, with the, um, and he was taking his towel and he made an omelette in, the, in between and ate the omelette and crossed the other side. Another time he took his manager on his back and he crossed the Niagara Falls. Nothing happened, he was so professional, everybody was clapped and cheered, you know, so joyful. Next time he took a wheelbarrow and took the wheelbarrow on the tight drop and then walked, crossed over the Niagara Falls. People were so happy, so amazed by his performance. Next he said, the, looking at the cheerful you know, crowd, he asked, how many of you think that I can carry one of you in the wheelbarrow and cross Niagara Falls? People said, of course you can do it. Why not? You are great. You do how many things you did. He pointed one person and said, you want to be in the wheelbarrow? This person said, no, I can't. Why? You said you, I'll be able to do it. Oh, no, 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 no. This is what happened in our life. We trust God in everything. He, we know that he, can, he will be able to do it. He is perfect. He will, I'll trust in you. But, you know, in my life, you know, I don't think that this is possible. This is lack of trust. If you know that God is able to do it, give it to him. He will be able to fulfill all your desires of your heart. But many times we don't want to go to that extent. You know, I, I have to stop here. In order to be able to hear God's voice, first we have to analyze and make sure we are in communion with Him. That we have a right relationship with Him. This is not like a robot-like relationship. We chant a prayer in the morning, in the evening, and it looks like everything is okay. I did my part. We are fooling ourselves. You know, um, so people, those who are married for 20 years, 30 years, if somebody come and ask you, what is your husband like? You know, he likes sugar in your tea. He like uh, milk in your tea, in, uh, in his tea. You say, I don't know. Can you ask him? What kind of relationship is that? You should know if you're living together for 20 years, 40 years, 30 years, you should know what your husband's like. Or you, what your wife like. That's the relationship that only you will know through the relationship. This is exactly like our relationship with God. If you know God doesn't like certain things, people know that. Another example I'll give you, it may not be applicable here, I don't know whether you'll get it or not. We have a puppy at home. We train the puppy in such a way that it doesn't come to the, the, the family. Uh, so the living room. Sometimes children play around with the puppy and uh, they play in the, the kitchen or the other side and they, you, you have seen that in the cartoon, you know. Uh, it, they play and then the children ra run to the, the living room. The puppy just follow them but at the border of the living room will stop, break like, drag it and stop at the border. It doesn't come to the living room, you know why? Because the puppy knows that I don't like it. I don't like him to come into the living room. He's stopped right there and look. This is exact. He knows even the small animal. You know, with, which has no big memory or no big, you know, brain or anything. He knows what is in my, what is my desire. How much more we should be careful about knowing God's heart. He has given us his spirit in our heart that we should be able to communicate. We should be able to know what is in God's heart. So many times we don't understand 
this, what is in his heart, because we are distracted with so many things. We are distracted with many other things in our life. <coughs> Another general, general rule, and I will finish it here. Just ask this question yourself before you do anything. If I do this, does it bring God glory? If I take this job, does it give God more glory, little bit more? Do I have an opportunity to give, glorify God through this? If I choose this relationship, does it bring God glory a little bit more? Can we together serve God? Can we together praise God? Is that my idea? If the answer is no, you right away, you know that that's not God's will. Even if you pray for, you know, months and years, that's not God's will. God wanted to take glory out of everything. <clears throat> and uh, ultimate goal in our life is to glorify God. And I know that it is, my time is up. And I know that it was a, a very deep and vast subject as you um, go through this. And I only touched the surface of the, 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 the theme. It, I didn't go to the, to the deep depth. <clears throat> Now, let me recap before I stop. To be able to understand God's will, we must first be a child of God, not by words, but in our, truly in our heart. Let's be a child of God. Second is we have to be sanctified, get to set apart from God, just for His service, like vessels consecrated. See, we have to be, we have to think, I have to know that I am set apart for this Lord. Third one, the, most of us are struggling with do not conform to the world but transform by relieving of your we all have struggles with that we have to know that and <clears throat> then if we are in the right relationship with him God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit he also speaks to us through godly counsel like people older than us, our parents, mentors, etc. If you are unable to hear God's voice, we should check first. Our hearts are actually tuned into Him. If you are seeking advice from the right people. And in conclusion, I want to leave this verse with you. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee in the way thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. What I want to put was he will guide us with his eye. God has promised to guide us with his eyes. If we want to, if we want to see that guidance, we should be looking at him. <coughs> Otherwise, we will not be able to see his direction in our life. May his name be glorified. Let's pray. Loving, gracious Father.